electric power from the sea water. Everyone knows what energy potential lies in the world's oceans. Many private and government companies are working to create technologies for obtaining energy from the ocean. At the present days, the most common way to obtain such energy is tidal power plants or TPPs. Tidal power plants are a special type of hydroelectric power station that operate by converting the energy of the tides. However, the use of TPPs is very limited by geography. Large differences in water level do not occur everywhere, and in closed seas the ebb and flow of the tides is practically not noticeable at all. In addition, quite a lot of time passes between the high and low tide phases, during which energy is not generated. In addition, TPPs is rather complex technical structure that requires large capital expenses. A more promising way to obtain energy from the sea is a so-called wave energy. Engineers around the world have proposed many different designs of wave generators, on the base of which wave power plants have already been built. However, as always, there are positive and negative aspects of any project, and it is the ratio of these parameters that determines the feasibility of using the devices being created. Wave power plants are no exception. Their advantages include the environmental safety of the installations, the ability for them to perform protective functions by damping waves near port waters and the coastline as a whole, classifying them as renewable energy sources, the low cost of generated electricity as well as a long service life. The disadvantages of this type of power plant include the low power of generated energy, the unstable nature of operation caused by atmospheric phenomena, and the potential danger for shipping and fishing. A serious common disadvantage of pests and wave generators is calm and the absence of tidal waves, as well as being tied to a specific geographical point, and the difficulty of using it on a ship. We offer another technical solution for obtaining electrical energy from the sea. The video captured the surf line in the infrared range. The thermal imager clearly shows the temperature difference between different layers of water. It should be just noted that due to even a small temperature difference, it's possible to obtain electrical energy using thermoelectric generators. Let's see what it looks like in practice. In front of you there is a device owing to which I'm going to produce electric current to make a ventilator rotate using the warmth of my hand. You witness that the ventilator begins to rotate. The warmth of my hand is being transmitted to the table by means of polymer thermoelectric generators. Consequently, the work is being done and electric current is generated. We will not talk in detail about this method of generating electricity here. You can find the main technical characteristics and other information in the patent description. Using thermal assemblies placed near the coastline, you can generate electricity regardless of the waves. At the same time, there will be no interference with shipping, fishing and recreation of tourists. Thermal generators don't have any moving parts which fundamentally simplifies their use. Seas and oceans 
are huge batteries and transformers of solar energy that is converted into energy from waves, currents, heat and wind. The ocean's energy resources are renewable and practically inexhaustible. The experience of operating existing ocean and marine energy systems shows that it is caused almost no harm to the environment. The world's oceans contain enormous energy potential thanks to the energy of the sun. In addition, no heating under the influence of short wave radiation, the so called process of radiolysis occurs. Radiolysis is a chemical transformation of the substance that occurs when the energy of ionizing radiation is absorbed. During radiolysis, because of the process of ionization and excitation of molecules, intermediate active particles are formed. Excited Me plus ions, electrons, free radicals, and other particles. Intermediate particles are characterized by higher activity, short lifetimes, and large reaction rate constants. For every square meter of the Earth's surface, 1367 watts of energy, solar constant, comes from the Sun. About 1,020 volts reach the Earth through the atmosphere at the equator. As an example, let us take the average monthly insulation in December on the Black Sea coast of the Caucasus, Sochi region. For this location, insulation is 1.59 kilowatt hour per square meter. For comparison, we specifically choose the months with the lowest insulation. If we estimate the average insulation per square kilometer, we get 1.59 gigawatt hour. Even taking into account reflection losses and conversion efficiency, we get a very large supply of renewable energy. Our company has developed a method for converting potential and renewable energy accumulated in water into electrical energy. To confirm the performance of a developed method and evaluate the energy parameters, we made a prototype which you see on the screen. The operating principle of our device is in some way similar to the operation of an electrophore machine, well known in physics. In such a machine, the rotation of disks with metal sectors leads to the transfer of electrical chargers. The disks collect chargers from the air and so-called neutralizers distribute them. Our device uses water instead of air that is also a carrier of active ions, and its movement in some way acts as the disks of the electrophore machine. The figure shows a schematic diagram of the device. Water with active ions enters the device at a certain rate. Next, it enters the so-called electrochemical charge distributor where ions with an excess of positive and negative charges are separated. After distribution on electrochemical current collectors, these charges are attached to the electrodes and, if an electrical load is placed between them, a current will appear in the circuit. The screen shows a dynamic charge separation scheme. Red color indicates positive charge, green color indicates negative charge. The appearance and disappearance of black squares means the release and acquisition of ion charge. 
using the example of the operation of the manufacturer prototype, the parameters of the developed converter were evaluated. We used ordinary tape water as an energy source, although it would be more efficient to use water from natural sources. As noted, for this designed converter, it would be most efficient to use sea water. We see that when water is passed through this model, an electric current is generated. An LED lamp with an electrical power consumption of about 10 Watt was used as an electrical load. Repeating the experiment with the same lamp where process water is used as an energy carrier. The type of load doesn't affect the output parameters of the converter. If an LED lamp is replaced, for example, with a fan with the same power consumption, then the load replacement won't affect the output electrical parameters. To obtain one megawatt hour of electrical energy you will need a pump with a capacity of 1300 cubic meters per hour the electrical consumption of the pump will be about 100 kilowatt hour of electrical energy the figure shows a hypothetical generator with a generation capacity of 1 megawatt. The overall dimensions of such a generator can be 100 multiply 5 multiply 5 meters. It's advisable to place power units at a certain safe distance from the coastline to avoid damage during a storm. Water is supplied to a power unit through pipes using pumps. It would be best to lay the pipes through an underground sewer. An activator is installed at the water intake point. Electrical cables must be laid from the power unit to the substation. The number of such power units depends on energy consumption tasks. Based on the presented development, it's possible to design and manufacture autonomous sources of electrical energy that will be low dependent on changes on weather conditions at the geographic point of their location. 